treat for you. I'm going to unbox Rising Eagles, Austerlitz 1805. This is from Hexasim Games. Uh, the designer is Walter Vodowski. I probably pronounced that wrong, so sorry, Walter. Um, and this is part of the Eagles of France series. I did an earlier unboxing and coverage of Last Eagles, which dealt with Linné, uh, Linné, or Linné, uh, 1815. I always mispronounce things, especially if they're French. Um, and I was really impressed with that system and series, and I've covered several uh, Napoleonic tactical or grand tactical type uh, games, or games that really focus more on the battle than the necessarily the whole campaign. And those include... Um, you know, La Bataille, which, you know, has multiple rule sets, uh, Library of Napoleonic Battles, uh, the Eagles of France series now, and uh, there's at least one or two others that I've uh, dabbled in, if not more out there, but I'm really talking about series and systems now. And I really liked how, um, you know, Last Eagles portrayed uh, the battle and wanted to go back a little bit further. This one right here, I believe, might be the second in the series. I think Fallen Eagles, dealing with Waterloo, was first, and this, uh, dealing with Austerlitz, might have came second. Um, as you can see here, this is uh, not shrink-wrapped. I picked this up at um, Noble Knight, mainly because of my uh, experience with Last Eagles and wanting to explore more Napoleonic systems. Uh, in this space, um, and so saved it for, I, I got this a while back, but I saved this for my Napoleonic week, so let's take a look, quick look at the back of the box here, uh, here is an example of the counters, an example of the map, and we see here, it says here, following uh, on from Fallen Eagles, the Battle of Waterloo, Rising Eagles covers another of history's most famous battles, Austerlitz. The game includes three short scenarios together with a full battle scenario, offering alternative options to simulate fog of war and battle plans. The order rules in Rising Eagles have an even greater impact on those in Following Eagles. The ability to change order has been reduced. Initial planning is an important feature as befits a Napoleonic battle of such scale. In addition, fog of war has been further developed. Players will share some of the uncertainty experienced by actual commanders as to what precisely they are facing you can see here units or regiments map is 250 meters per hex uh, and uh, turn is one hour complexity is four to five i don't know if there's two different level of rules there have to look and then solitaire suitability is seven and then there's the designer walter vajowski uh, again probably mispronounced that so there you have it i just like the look of these counters here Anyway, so let's get inside the box. Now, this uh, was from Noble Knight. I don't, it was unpunched, but, um, you know, I don't know if it came shrinked or uh, I guess someone, the pre private pre previous owner might have inventoried it or did whatever, but this is exactly why I found it with some loose cards. Now, this system is not a card driven system per se, it's more card assisted. And as you can see, some of these cards kind of augment what you can do and tells you when you can play it. So it's more of an assist type system. And these are these are okay cards. Show a little bit of wear on the side there, uh, but I think that's just from rattling in the box, not necessarily from uh, gameplay. So you have two sets there. The blue set looks a little bit thicker. We got some dice here in the bag. We have the series rules again, and I don't know how much, uh, I think this predates the last Eagle, so I don't know how much the series system has changed over time. I might have to go back and look at that. We're looking at 24 pages of rules. It's dual column, it's glossy, pa uh, glossy paper and uh, full color where there is uh, images. As you can see, here's an example of some of the counters. I really like those leaders. Some markers. Glossary, sequence of play, activation, offensive fire. Well, that's part of the activation. The formation, activation segment, offensive fire, movement segment, uh, melee, cavalry. I, know, I know people hate when I pronounce that. Opportunity to fire, defensive fire, uh, cavalry pursuit, end of turn check, and then end of turn phase. You have stacking. Not a lot of rules there. Lead unit, 
zones of zone of control not a lot there that's pretty standard orders now this is where this game uh, becomes interesting because each of the Napoleonic titles and series and systems that I've been messing with do orders a little bit different. And that's a lot, a lot of times that's where you get your complexity is how they try to simulate the orders and the chain of command and the line of communications, all that kind of stuff. You know, basically command uh, is through the orders. You have categories of orders, independent movement, Commanders, special abilities. Then you have movement section, and there's examples of movement here showing you how the move points are allocated. Very nice. I mean, this looks, and my recollection from Last Eagles, this is a relatively straightforward system. Uh, these systems can get very convoluted, very complex. You're dealing with a lot of stuff going on, especially in this time period. So I like how this approaches it. Um, here's combat, you have fire combat. And examples there, numerous examples on that page right there. Then you have um, melee or melee. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm in a mispronunciation mood. Hey, that's every day. Then you have retreat and advance, initial route, route phase, cavalry special rules. There's your counter charge, retreat before combat, pursuit, prepared attacks. There's a lot of a lot of rules on uh, mounted units here as you can see and some examples there a uh, lot we're, we're still going on fatigue uh defense option versus cavalry cavalry flanking attacks attacking together with infantry so actually so far the most rules are dealing with mounted units and that's not uncommon in this period but there are quite a few rules there actually that's not uncommon in ancients or medieval as well in some cases but again the horses always get special treatment. Uh, here's special rules. Here's those tactical cards that we were looking at. Morale. Morale's huge. Uh, <laughs> there's only a little section there, but it's important to the overall effect of the game and, and uh, effects of combat. Special events, weather, fog of war, and there you have it. So overall, you know, the rules are not... When you compare this to even the Library of Napoleonic Battles, but definitely to La Bataille, that these aren't that complex, in my opinion. But you know, your mileage may vary. Here is the specific uh, book for the Battle of Austerlitz. So this is going to have your scenarios and any kind of special rules. So here's the different scenarios. And not a, not a lot of images in here. In fact, I haven't seen any yet. This is just listing out, you know, the the, um, the list of the armies and the orders and probably setup and the like. Here's some reinforcements and special rules. I think this is might be the campaign game. And then you have some examples of the cards or talking a little bit about the cards there. And here's an example of play. So I always like that. I always like the example of play. Then designer notes, player notes, and then units explanation right there on the back of that book. Then we have, this is thicker player aid type material. Here's your melee, melee, here's your fire table, and you're going to have two of these, one for each player. Get a good look at that. So that's nice. Then we have a turn track, and this is on that thicker uh, poster board type paper as well. So here's scenarios one, two, and three, and then four uses like this tells you which tracks to use here. Of course, that's one side because that'll be off to the side of the map. Then we have your terrain effects chart, which is going to tell you the terrain, a picture of the terrain, terrain, movement cost, fire, dice roll modifier, and melee. Dice roll modifier. And then on the back, we have unit identification chart. So this is also nice. It kind of tells you, you know, how to read the units and the counters. So then we have that. Then we have, these are like, um, I think these are like setup maps. But these are on thick uh, or on poster board type paper. 
So you have your defense orders. This is like how do you handle your orders, maybe. So some of these maps here. So it looks like there's three of those. Then we have your uh, order of battle. So this is scenario two. With a different scenario. So this is your scenario two. This is your order of battle or setup for the different uh, scenarios. There's scenario two. We kind of flipped over here. Scenario one. Here's scenario three. So we got scenario one, two, and three. And they're double sided to cover all the different uh, forces. The different wings here center right wing russian guard so there you have it so there's scenario one two and three and then we have this is again scenario three so this is one of two so there's two setup cards for uh, scenario three there and they kind of flip like this so there you go so on nice paper, setup cards, then we get to the bag of counters. Let's take a look what's inside there. And the counters are, uh, I better be careful because if they're in a bag, that means they, they probably come off easy, uh, are pre-rounded. They are you know, decent thickness. Yeah, these I can just touch the, I feel from, from touch that these are going to come out. So there's Napoleon. So they're pre-rounded, so no clipping or no need to clip. I think they look nice and they're double-sided. Looks like we have like, what, four counter sheets? Let me go out a little bit. I'm gonna have to go out a little bit for the uh, Maps anyway. We got some administrative markers here with the route. Then the fourth sheet. With again, some more administrative markers, activations, and the like. Yeah, just, just touching that, it's going to pop this out. So there are the counters. I'll put those back on the plastic just in case they want to jump off. The sheet. Then yeah, there, there was the punch out for the card. So the cards came like this in those punch out. So the kind of the old perfed cards. If you played any old Avalon Hill games, their stuff was perfed. So here we go. Here's one of the maps. Now this map has kind of a um, it's kind of a greenish tint to it, and they are double sided. So maybe that's for the different scenarios. I don't know how you play the master scenario if they're double-sided. But here, here's the icy river and pond right there. So I got a little bit of glare there. Let's go up a little bit more. Oh, it's not working with me today on my viewfinder. Here we go. Let's do it. I'll figure out a way around it. Move stuff out of the way here. And it's double sided. So this says here, this is for scenario two. It says at the very top, right up there. And this is scenario one. So, so you can just do it. So I guess the back is for the grand scenario. So this is just scenario one right here. So you can do a nice little set piece my phone is not working with me today so there we have this all right this is working a little bit better now let's try this here so this is scenario one then we have uh, scenario two was the top part of this here 
and you have a little bit of a green border to tell you where what are the confines of this scenario but as i said the whole map has a little bit of a green tinge interesting uh choice graphic choice there Let's see what this map is here here's the second map there's two maps and again they're both double-sided oh this is scenario three scenario three looks really uh interesting so it's a little bit more than a map here I'll try to get that glare off so you have a lot of dead space up there with that green and it's just this section of the map here this is scenario three Salt's, uh, Salt's Great Breakthrough. Looks like it is uh, five turns. And, and then you have these uh, two large maps will, uh, on this side here, will make up your scenario one i guess the big the uh the grand scenario so look, uh, here's where the overlap is right here so there you have it there so the larger map a little bit of uh, technical difficulty today folks phone's going on the fritz but I will struggle through it all. So there you go. There's a little bit view of the big map here. So here's Pretz and Heights here and the icy uh, lakes and ponds. And uh, it's an interesting looking map, very interesting. So uh, there you have it. This is what you get in a um, box of Rising Eagles, part of the Eagles of France system. I'll lay those counters there. A lot of, lot of stuff in here. Uh, the system, as I said, is not, doesn't appear to be overly complex. At least uh, my experience with last Eagles uh, proved that it was not that complex. A lot of good stuff in here. Let's put this like this. Keep moving along here. So I like this um, and uh, thought you might be interested in seeing what's in here as well. Oh, can't forget the cards and the dice. And there you have it. That is all that's in the box of Rising Eagles, Australis 1805. If you've played this or any of the uh, uh, Eagles of France series, let me know what you think. Uh, do, you, uh, do you like the look of it, the feel of it, the mechanics? Um, how do you think it simulates these battles? Um, and I also like comparing some of these to uh, among the battles, like finding uh, two or three systems for one battle and seeing how that works out. I haven't done a lot of that, but I might do more of that over time. Anyway, that's what I have for you today on this uh, Napoleonic week. Uh, please let me know what you think of this or anything else that's on your mind. Just keep it civil. And uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching.